everybody out there on YouTube. We are the Middle Age Guys. In this video, we're going to be not bullshitting. We're going to be bloodletting. All right, we're, we're going to be coming out with a lot of bloody stuff, and we're going to be talking about the <laughs> Castlevania Netflix series that just passed a few weeks ago. Uh, yeah, this may be a little late in coming, but this is going to be our review and our thoughts on that particular uh, that particular set of episodes. Let me get all the introduction, introductions out of the way. I am the Reverend. The theme here. And I'm Grey Mouse One. Okay. Um, the Castlevania Netflix show, um, we had first covered it on our particular channels all the way back in the beginning of June. I believe the first... Um, uh, the first uh, video or teaser trailer was, well, our first videos, we, we went ahead and we published out the first week of June. So the teaser tra trailer was put out like last week of March or whatnot. And uh, for this particular project and everything, it was pretty intriguing. Adi Shankar, who's a, a well-known producer for a lot of um, uh, high budget, you know, big budget um, movies in Hollywood and everything, he signed on and he said that he got the rights he wanted to go ahead and put out an animated series based off of Castlevania and that it was going to be R-rated as fuck and bloody as hell. Um, to say the least, he accomplished that goal. All right. Uh, this particular um, this particular show, I think, really kind of allayed a lot of people's fears about another adaptation for a video game to another media, whether it be <laughs> animation or movies or TV. Because generally speaking... Uh, just to be completely honest, over the last 30 years of seeing video games being adapted into other media, majority of the time they're really bad. <laughs> All right, but you know, uh, the actually the story for this particular animated series starts all the way back in uh, March of 2007 when um, Warren Ellis was actually approached by the folks uh, at Federator Studios to go ahead and write up a script for, based off of Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse. Okay? Um, what happened was that this particular script was going to be for a full 90-minute direct-video movie. Um, and during the time, he had basically uh, stuck really close to uh, Koji Igarashi and the folks over there at, at Konami to stay close to as far as the details and everything else went. Um, the thing about it was that originally their plan was for a full three act storyline. There was going to be three series or three movies that they were going to do. And he was going to develop all of them. Uh, part two and part three never got greenlit. In fact, what happened was that when it came down to actually um, finalizing all the distribution rights and everything else for this first series, everything just pretty pretty much fell through. Uh, Frederator still had the rights to it. They just were not able to ever get around to producing it. Uh, so fast forward to around 2012, that's when Adi Shankar actually uh, jumped into the picture. What happened was that um, uh, the folks over there at Frederator Studios, um, well, what happened was that Adi Shankar, after doing Dread, he was actually approached to do a live action version of the script that Warren Ellis put together. So they were going to do Castlevania, the series, in live action. Thank God that never happened. <laughs> okay. Thank God that never happened, all right? Uh. Uh, and what happened was that, um, you know, when he started looking at, out, uh, looking at this script, he was like, I really, really want to do this, and I really think that the... Um, uh, the the animation, you know, sticking with animation, going with the original vision is, is probably best for what we what we want to do. That's probably going to serve the fans of the games and the media best. Uh, so it wasn't until Powerhouse Animation Studios actually came up and they negotiated the deal with Netflix to go ahead and actually put this out. Um, really, the the series as it is, the season is really not so much a season as it is a mini series, it's only four episodes long. And yes, if you add up all the minutes together, it's around a 90 minute, uh, direct to video movie OVA. Uh, and that's what they put together. Um, which, you know, as we know it, Netflix went ahead, they signed it, they put it out. They've already agreed to doing a second season, which is going to be coming out, um, which doesn't have a, a, a concrete date yet, but has already been confirmed 
have twice as many episodes, eight episodes for the second season that's coming up. All right. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do with this particular video right here, uh, I'm going to keep the synopsis really, really, really short because really there's only four episodes and it, it could be summed up very cleanly. But we're going to handle this very similar to how we handle our other reviews for other animated um, uh, projects like Young Justice. Well, shit, that's pretty much what we do and that's what we're basing off of, all right? <laughs> so after the synopsis, we're going to go over what we liked, what we didn't like, and then the third point, instead of you know, saying, you know, stuff that we see that's going to set up, be act as a setup for the future. We're pretty much going to go over what we'd like to see in the next season. And if they're going to do a third season, especially if they're following the plans that Warren Ellis initially had, you know, what that, that plan is going to be. All right. Um, let me get the synopsis out of the way. The quick synopsis is this. All right. Um, Vlad Tepish, Dracula. All right, has a woman approach him. She's a doctor, and she knows that he has a hold of a lot of technology that isn't uh, practiced otherwise anywhere else throughout the world. And she wants access to that technology so that she can learn how to heal people. All right, she meets him in uh, in the country of Wallachia in 1455, and he agrees to give her access to that technology. Twenty years later. We find that in Wallachia, in the town of Targovista, 1475, we see that she's being burnt at the stake as a witch. All right? Now, what happens is that Dracula is uh, returning back to his home, and he's basically tried to live his life as best as he can as a normal person over the last 20 years. He's married this woman. They've had a child together who is Adrian Tepish, also known as Alucard. Uh, and he finds out, the first thing he finds out when walking up to his door, that his wife has been stolen away and she's being burned at, uh, at the stake as a, as a witch. Dracula, being Dracula, does not take kindly to this. So what happens <laughs> is that he, he appears, uh, appears in the church courtyard, you know, um, in front of all the priests and all the townspeople in a huge pillar of fire, and he, and he asks him a simple question, where is my wife? What have you done? Okay. Uh, the priests that are there denounce her as a witch. They say that he is a figment of, uh, of, of their imagination, uh, a story uh, told by uh, Satanists and people who believe in black magic to keep people in fear. And he tells them, I will give you one year, make peace with whatever God you believe in, and leave this country. Take whatever mark of humanity you, you have put on the country and remove it. He's like, otherwise... You know, I will rain down hell on top of you. Fast, fast forward to seven, uh, 1476. <laughs> Guess what? It's one year later. The people of Wallachia or Targovista are right there. Instead of leaving, uh, exiting the country, they are actually celebrating the fact. They have this <laughs> huge town fair celebrating the fact that they put this, uh, this woman to death by uh, burning her at the stake. Of course, Dracula says, you done fucked up. He literally rains hell down on them with blood, fire, and brimstone, and demons. And demons. And, yeah, and he, he goes out of his way, and he starts pretty much exterminating all humanity, whatever he can see, whatever is in the countryside, all right? Uh, during this time, um, Alucard tries to stop him, actually, you know, previously, but what happens is that he, he pretty much says, uh, bitch, shut the fuck up, hurts him, you know, puts him away. At around this time, we run into Trevor Belmont. Guess what? He's not very happy about being in Belmont. He's not very happy about his job. Neither is he happy about dealing with the church. But he does eventually come around to go ahead and help the people in the villages surrounding him to fight off the demons and everything else. During that time, he runs into Sifa Belnades, one of the speakers, also one of the other main characters out of Dracula 3. Excuse me, Dracula's Curse, Castlevania 3. And then they also unearth Alucard from his underground tomb, wake him from his sleep, and then they start their quest in earnest. And that's pretty much where the series ends. All right? Um, I think I've covered everything without being too verbose. Have I? No, no. Yeah. You... Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So without mon uh, monopolizing the time anymore, guys, what did you like about this series? Uh, the floor is open. <sighs> Thank God it wasn't 
live action, <laughs> just as you alluded to earlier, Reverend, because, oh my God, that would have, it most likely would have been, you know, horrible. Um, I like the fact. Uh, Dragon that, Ball Z levels or Tekken no, levels. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, I, I like that the fact that, okay, they are following, they are following the initial story of Castlevania. They're not fucking that up. Damn, I was in fear of them middle fingering that all the way to the max. But they are actually doing it justice. And they're starting from Castlevania 3. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Dracula's Curse. <sighs> Grey Mouse, what about you initially? What, I mean, damn, what do you like about the series? I like that they kept it goth. It, oh, it was, it, it really oh, felt. Dark? Yeah. Goth, yeah. Oh, goth, yeah. It was, uh, it was very Castlevania, like. <laughs> um, I did like how, you know, uh, back in, back then the church was was pretty much the uh, Catholic Church, rather, was pretty much the ruling force of of government back in those days. If you did anything outside of what the church thought was correct. You were condemned and burned at the stake. So I liked how they kept it within the Castlevania storyline and also kept it within Middle Ages time during the 1400s. And it was just like that in real life. I mean, the church was a king. If you did anything outside the church, if the church even thinks that you're doing something, you will be burned at the stake as a, as a witch or warlock or whatever, what have you. Because it was blasphemous that you did any talk against the church, the church ruled, and I like how they kept that, you know, with what the uh, the comic or uh, the the, uh, the game. The, I'm sorry, the uh, <laughs> I got all thrown away. The, <laughs> the game, <laughs> the uh, cartoon is what I meant to say. Um, yeah, I, that was one thing that I and I like the the mood of everything, you know. Like uh, it was very, it was a very dark, very goth. The, the, uh, the animation was dark, you know. And I have to say that when the castle came out of the out of the ground, I was like, man, oh man, oh man, that was awesome. When Dracula's castle came up, yep, yep, yeah. I'd I'd have to say the. If if you've seen any of our reviews before, all right, I am a sucker for good character interaction, and the you know kudos to Warren Ellis, who um, according to him he had something like over twenty one rewrites of the initial script mm -hmm. because of the uh, consultations that he had with uh, uh, Koji Igarashi and the other folks at Konami over it, all right, and so he paid attention to a lot of things, and he also fleshed out a lot of things that weren't quite so apparent in, in some of the things like uh we know we knew that uh that alucard was half human so at one point we knew that dracula had to have been had to have been married to a normal human person exactly. right yeah uh we never we never find out her name or anything else like that and in fact the closest that we kind of get to getting a backstory at all is like in castlevania uh simply of the night there's this one chapter where Alucard is having a nightmare and he's reliving mm -hmm. the day where his mom is being burnt at the stake, mm -hmm. right? They really don't fill in the reasons why in any of the games. Mm -hmm. And Warren Ellis was very smart in actually uh, putting that together. Um, and, and the dialogue, because of it, just reflected the types of characters that we're dealing with. You know, um, uh, Dracula is evil, all right? You can see it just by the... The, the field of people just skewered and impaled on stakes, all right, for, for hundreds of yards in front of the, the entrance on the walkway leading up to the castle. Um, you know, Alucard is, is young, but he holds very dear both sides of, uh, of what he is. You know, he knows that he's a vampire, but he also knows that he's a human, and he, and he, he stands up for, uh, to reflect the type of ideals that his mom had, all right? Uh, Trevor... Uh, is is a brash drunkard uh, that even though he's 
you know, very short in patience and everything else, even though he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to be troubled, you know, half the time with a lot of the general worries or stuff like that. He will do the right thing in the end. And Sifa is, you know, a young, idealistic, you know, headstrong uh, um, mage who, who he ends up working with. All right. Um, but, you know, for, for the sake of, uh, of this particular, uh, um, this particular review, not everything there there not everything was perfect with this particular uh this particular series really? right um yeah actually uh, i do have a few uh, a few sticking points all right and if uh, i think anybody who sits there and, and takes a moment to to look back at the whole, the thing as a whole can see a few uh sticking points some of them nitpicky some of them very obvious technical sticking points too all right and that's what we're going to talk about next uh, what were the things that you noticed in this particular series uh, or in the episodes that, that were there that you didn't like or if you had a chance, you would have changed a little bit? Floor is open, guys. Mm. <coughs> okay, as nitpicky as it's going to sound, I wish there was no, you know, them showing. I wish they didn't show, like, a video game based on Konami, based off Konami. I wish they didn't show that. <laughs> But no, no, no. But um, damn, <laughs> I I just I can't even be nitpicky about this because most of the shit that I can actually be nitpicky about, I could just turn into comedy. Really, Dracula gave them one fucking year. He, he, he you're a figment of our imagination. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm right here. Don't you see the flames? Can't you feel the flames? Don't you hear me speaking? I am not a figment of anyone. You just burned. How do I know all this? You burned my wife. Now I'm coming. <laughs> Gray Mouse, is there anything that you didn't like or that you had to change? Yes, there's actually several. Okay. Um, one thing I really felt that the music didn't fit with the scenes um i think the music could have been better it would have nice it would have been nice to actually have a nod back to the the uh um, the game it, whether it be a, a me- shit like this or yeah like a, this a me- yeah a measure or two or three you know within within certain scenes or even within, super castlevania within that also um you could really tell who the main characters are. Um, I'm talking about the art style is what I'm criticizing now. Mm. Um, because it seems like the main characters are w- very well drawn out. You can see their facial expressions, their face features and all this. And if it's a side character or like a village character or whatever, they were really, I mean, very basic drawings where almost like stick figures in the back compared <laughs> to uh your main your main cast um and i i was really like especially with a a lot of the uh the the villages the villagers and whatnot it it was really evident at that particular point i was like wait a minute yeah the the drawing it didn't look like it was done yeah i'm not saying it looked like stick (laughs) on but i I did but it's like in comparison to the main characters the main cast yes you know, it was, uh, and then, um, I was actually, when they, were, when they were going through the bottom, um, of Dracula's castle, the very, very bottom, when they're going through the, the, the bottom part and the big wheels, I was half expecting to see a fucking Medusa head come across. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, where's the Medusa head? <laughs> you know, I, I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it, man. No, that would have actually pissed me off if the Medusa head would have been doing the wavy thing and then if if Trevor couldn't hit it with the whip. (laughs) You just knocked backwards into a pit. No, no, (laughs) no. That that would have... He just knocked backwards. No, fuck it. No, but I was like, when he's going through the bottom part of the cast, I was like, come on, Medusa. Come on, Medusa head. You got to come come through. You got to come through. No. Well, I, I hear what you're saying, but still, no. I, I still um, you know, dread those things from the 8-bit days. 
Yeah, but that, that was just one of that was more of a uh, a comic. That, yeah, yeah, that was definitely a nitpick. Oh, was there was there anything else that stood out to you right now, Gray Mouse? Um, not really. I, you know, the, 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 if I were to pick something that was wrong, main was wrong. I, I would think that, like I said, it seems like the the main cast was done well, and then like the supporter i mean actually you know to be honest not even just the villagers it's actually even the priests some of the priests that were there were not very well just not defined maybe is the word i should use here not very well defined but it's funny because that's a part of the comedy to me why waste any time on cannon fodder (laughs) true but yeah that would be the only thing that i would nitpick go ahead uh reverend what do you got well, I, I got to say that, um, you know, uh, right off the bat, uh, when I when I found out that it was four episodes, I was like, what the fuck, really? You know, yeah. and now now that I know the backstory and the back history behind the, the production of this yeah. of this particular piece, a lot of a lot of the issues that I, that I have with this particular production piece make a lot of sense. OK, um, like the like I said, the first thing was was the length. It. it I, I really felt like if this was something that was meant from the beginning to, to go ahead and be hosted on Netflix as a Netflix series, I would have expected like eight to 12 episodes right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which we're going to get, you know, in the next season over, it's going to be eight, eight episodes long. They've already confirmed that they just haven't given out a date yet. Okay. Unfortunately, the way that it, this particular thing moves and everything else, I'm expecting we're probably not going to see it until next year which sucks, but that's, that's probably that, but you know, um, so yeah, it was really, really short. The other thing, like, uh, you know, what Grey Mouse said is sometimes, sometimes it was really devoid of a lot of like uh, background soundtrack or anything like that. And I understand that they went out of their way, not to be too tied up with having to sit there and consult with Konami or have to ask them for tracks to license for distribution for right. this particular property, okay? Which is the whole reason why we didn't get anything like Bloody Tears, Son of the Beast, or the fucking the standard Castlevania theme or anything like that, okay? Um, however, just as a geek, I would have it would have helped with the atmosphere, you know, trying to help to to find that particular identity. Uh, the other thing that I that I saw was um, yeah. The animation quality is superb at certain points, <laughs> especially at the be- very beginning of the series. But when you get to the end, and you you almost, especially the last fight with with uh, Trevor yeah. and Alucard, where it where, where it feels like they're only doing like every third or fourth fucking frame. All right, even though the like it's very dynamic, the way that they have it set up and choreographed is is great, especially you know showing off the type of skill that they have. But it felt like like they were running out of production money. All right. It really felt like they were running out of production money. Okay. And yeah, you know, part of, part of that uh, production budget does go toward, Oh, Hey, look, you know, we can kind of use like the paper cutouts for the villagers or for the fucking priests or for the demons and stuff like that, you know? Um, but when it comes to, you've got like literally the best fucking action sequence between two guys out of the whole fucking four episodes. All right. And they're literally rendering out like only every third or fourth frame instead of, you know, the whole thing like it would if it was like a full 24 on 24. Um, Yeah, that stood out like a sore fucking thumb. All right. So, like I said, I really liked it a lot, you know, when it comes to like the the writing and and character interaction. They had it in spades, but there were technical things that, that, you know... um, technical issues that this particular series had that were kind of obvious. Now I don't expect to see this with the second season because guess what? Now they're going to have the full backing of Netflix green light. Yeah. Yeah. Full, full green light, full funding and everything else. And they know that they're going to be making everything for a full eight, eight episodes altogether instead of just a 90 minute straight to straight to DVD video, which is what this initially was planned as. All right. Hmm. That actually brings us up to our third point, guys. Uh, in short form, what would you like to see in the second season of Castlevania? Like you guys mentioned, 
maybe a hint at the music or the soundtrack or anything like that. Um, more, more fucking Belmont whipping things, you know, as Grey Mouse alluded to, the fucking Medusa heads, bats, skeletons, have them shit show up and have it, wait, have him, okay, don't, don't do the holy water glitch or anything like that, but <laughs> yeah, have whip, have knives, have, you know, specific weapons that we would use in the fucking game. It, it, just put that more into the series. But, 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 don't say, what a horrible night to have a curse. Don't fucking do that. Don't, 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 don't nope. fucking do that. <laughs> Grey Mouse, what about you? What would you like to see in the next season? Uh, I, I'm kind of on the same boat with you. I would like to see more of the game, um, the source material mm-hmm. put into the uh, into the cartoon or into the series, rather. Um, yeah, like, like you mentioned, you know, with uh, uh, having a lot of the the bloody tears and all these other tracks, you know, is owned by Konami. That that's kind of tough. Well, there can actually be some, you know, remixes of that. Yeah, yeah, they so, can they can harken back to it. Now that they've got the second second season money, hopefully they can have a little bit of funding to go ahead and pay for some licensing on that. You know, but go ahead, Grey Mouse. So you know, I was hoping that I hope that they don't go straight to Dracula. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I know that was that's the ultimate goal, but you know, you have eight episodes to stretch it out. I, I'm wondering. Is there enough source material there or to create enough source material there to make a story for eight more episodes before going straight to uh, Dracula? Are they going to have Alucard and Trevor go through Castlevania? <laughs> go through Dracula's they gotta castle? Have, they got to have Dracula's minions there. So, you know, I- I'm hoping to see a couple of uh, couple of the, the quote-unquote bosses or whatever you know, that, that we fought in the game. Like but uh, mainly, I like to see a lot of uh, storyline, a lot of story being filled in, especially since, you know, between the game between uh, uh, hmm. Dracula's Curse. You know, I mean, it, it, you play through the game, but it's not much there. You know, I like to see a little bit more interaction with, with the characters. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I I would say for the second season, um, I, I would like to see a lot of uh, a few more nods to the video game without getting too video gamey. No, yeah. I'm not expecting Trevor to sit there and whip whip a wall, and all of a sudden for a fucking pork chop to drop out for the, him to pick it up and everybody be magically healed. I'm not expecting to see that. All right, uh, they've already talked about that. They're they were trying to get that in. <sighs> I. I I, I think you. I think it would be hilarious if if yeah. they make some sort of note on it. But I I don't want to see that. Um, I, I would I would like to see. I would like to hear. Hopefully, like maybe they're able to sit there and get some of the tracks. If not directly, maybe some. Like I said, the ability to go ahead and remix something that's like it. Um, you know, I I would. That was probably one the one thing that I think if anything else was kind of missing from Castlevania and that's carried over to the animated uh, series that we had in front of us, that was like, I think the biggest gap was that sound. All right. Um, but one thing I definitely want to see is that I want to see, uh, see what they do with Grant when he, because they, they, they didn't include him in the, in the, in mm-hmm. the first set. Yeah. And according to Warren Ellis, he's, he, they were telling him that they want it to be a full, three set, you know, series, uh, a trilogy of, of movies that they were going to go ahead and put together. Since he didn't have the, the amount of time available, he didn't include Grant. But given the given how things go with the, the amount of lore that they have available, I want to see him included. All right. Um, you know, in fact, I, like Grey Mouse said, I want to see a lot more of the, the classic Castlevania monsters. In fact, I'm hoping that if they treat this like multiple, like uh, many trilogies that we know that are out there, if we treat the second season, the eight episodes, if it culminates to something that's very similar to The Empire Strikes Back, um, mm. I'm expecting Death to show up and kick everybody's ass before the end of the fucking season. Death better right? not be a little bitch. He, Death better not be a little bitch. No, please don't fucking do that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I mean, see, I want to see Frankenstein. I want to see the hunchbacks. I want to see. 
you know, I, fuck, I want to see Alucard turn into a fucking bat. Yeah, you know, there there's still a lot of a lot of stuff that that they can go ahead and tap from the video game series that they can easily actually go ahead and translate into an animated form that I think isn't going to insult the watchers and the game fa- uh, the people who are fans of the games. Mm. It's not going to insult their intelligence. Okay. Um, I, the, the funny thing about about this particular series is that, you know, the, the very first episode uh, was pretty much all about Dracula, okay? And then after that, gone, okay? I want to see him show up again, and I want him to, to be able to illustrate to everybody, this is the reason why you do not fuck with the dragon, all right? Um, that's kind of what I, what I want to see, all right? Um I think that pretty much, you know, and, and on top of that, I want to see a third season on top of this because I, I if they, especially if they're if they're following the way that they that the backstory of the production, you know, indicates it was supposed to be a three part act anyways. So um, I'd like to see how they how they go ahead and they deal with that. All right, um, let's do what we normally do. Uh, toward the end of, of most of our reviews, uh, on a scale of yay, nay, or meh, what are your thoughts and what's your verdict on Castlevania Netflix series season one, the first four episodes? Guys, floor is open. Oh, come on. <laughs> if you haven't watched this yet, yes, we're late to the game on our review, but if you haven't watched this, go ahead and watch it, especially if you're a fan of Castlevania. Please, this is a yay. I don't know if there's anyone that gave it otherwise, but yeah, Grey Mouse, what about you? I give it a yay. Um, I, I hope that they keep the the gore also. Mm. They, they, that's an important part. Hmm. I <laughs> doubt being whipped and cut up, and and you know, but I do I, I do get what you're saying. I yeah. Yeah, I doubt that they're going to take a step back for the fact that most of the Netflix series, whenever they, they're they able to sit there and break that ice, they usually go ahead and continue farther. Um, but for myself, no surprise here, this one's a yay. Uh, there, Yeah, there are technical issues with this particular with this particular set of episodes, all right? A lot of it screams, we ran out of budget during the last half of the last fucking episode, all right? Um, a lot of it screams we were really pinching pennies during the second, third, and fourth fucking episodes, you know, to go ahead and, and as far as the detail that they were setting up for, for everybody. I understand that. And given the backstory with this particular production, uh, it's acceptable. What really, really saves it is Warren Ellis's writing, all right? His writing, mm-hmm. the way that he puts a story together, and especially the way that he goes ahead and he puts together you know, the character interactions uh, between Alucard, Sifa, and and, and uh, Trevor, you know. And Dracula with the whole country of Wallachia, all right, <laughs> for, for that matter. Um, yeah, so it's a yay for me. Um, but what we really want to know, folks, like we say at the end of all of our reviews, what did you think about the Castlevania series that, uh, showed on Netflix July, uh, actually July 7th, uh, 2017, the four episodes as short, as short as it was, did you see it? You know, if you saw it, what did you think about it? If you haven't seen it, go out and see it. I, I We cannot recommend it enough, really, all right? And uh, once you've gone out and you've seen it, if you've seen our review here and you think we're off base or if you think we're, we're, we're doing a great job, we'd like to know. You can leave us a comment below to go ahead and tell us. While you're at it, mash on that like button. And if you really like what we're doing here, especially if you like our reviews and, you know, you want to give us an impetus to do more, we really hope you subscribe. With that, that's pretty much our review of the Castlevania Netflix series season one. And we're going to end this particular video right here. I'm the Reverend. The theme here. And I'm Grand Mouse One. Every form of entertainment has the right to exist, even if you don't like it. Yeah, I was going to say common sense logic and gaming thing, but yeah, it's Castlevania series. <sighs> what is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. Have at you. Credits. <laughs>